It doesn't matter who you are or what you have. Life can be pretty darn hard. And without a healthy mind, it's even harder. Check out online therapy with betterhelp.com slash roast and be on your way to a little more ease. And how are you today? Oh, I'm good. I'm good too. I'm just, I guess I'm just a little worn out. I've had quite the week. Well, I heard through the grapevine that you went to the Fuji's concert, uh, the pop-up. The, the, and you said it wasn't a, a full concert. It was like a, a teaser, uh, a promo, um, a sample. I, I, I mean, I heard how you hung on to the language when you described it. You said it wasn't a full concert, y'all. It wasn't a full concert. Like, you read that, you know, Instagram post that Janet put up, and you said, and she may have said dance with me, but nowhere did she say perform. So, I mean, the fact that you even got to see all three of them on stage, I, I'm surprised that you waited the three hours in the rain. So I have a lot of tea on that. And it's so funny because I went with my friend T. Cooper because it was, it was like last minute. So I was like, oh, well, I think she would appreciate going. So she came with me. So at the end of the concert, she was like, oh, this was like a Janet, like um, what Alex be talking about. But we will get to that because that is one of the stories. I have two good stories for y'all today. So I guess we can start with the Watch What Happens Live. Oh, yes. Were you there when Sissy Marks was on? Sissy Twink Marks? Oh, Lord. No. God, no. Like, I was there Tuesday night. That was the one with uh, Anderson Cooper. Oh, a different twink. <laughs> yes. Um, so, gosh, I'm going to just start from the beginning. So, you know, I'm trying to figure out something spiffy to wear, you know, look all cute, just in case I was on TV. Um, I think they didn't put the camera to the audience, but it's, it was just such a whole experience. I'm so excited to like just share it with you. So the building, it's in Soho and um, Tribeca, like close to Tribeca area. Um, there's no one out front. Like um, there was a line, but I was just surprised because like they told us to get there at 8.30. We get there at 8.15, like no one's in line. So I meet my friend, we're in line. The security guard greets us, tells us, you know, like we, it should be a minute, they're gonna come out and get us. A black car rolls up and it's Andy Cohen. It's just me and my friend in line and Andy just walks up to the building. You know, I say, hey, Andy, Mr. Cohen. And you know what, I ain't even think in that moment to get a picture. Ugh, I'm so angry about that. It's okay, I'm sure we'll have lunch with him later. <laughs> The thing is, like, I've seen Andy, like, out and about, like, four, five times in New York. I just, I don't like to be that person to be like, you know, oh, hey, you know, watch what happens live. Can I have a picture? You know, it's just not me. But, yeah, when he went in, he was looking at my friend and I up, up and down. Like, it looked like he was undressing us with his eyes. <laughs> like, it really felt that way. So, yeah, the audience was, like, at the most maybe 12 to 14 people. So it was a really intimate setting. So already I knew it was gonna be something because the audience coordinator, she just like emails us like back and forth. Like I could just be like, oh, what, what can I wear? She would email me right back. So it wasn't like a general thing. She was just emailing us individually. So she was nice. So we got there, they put us in a little room it's a bar, open bar with free drink tickets. Now, it wasn't um, hard liquor, but uh. like um, the canned stuff. Like, you know, um, it was beer, it was the canned like- um, Hard seltzers. Hard seltzers and stuff like that, and uh, barefoot, stuff like that. Not skinny girl? No. <laughs> but yeah, so we're in the little waiting room. This is, it was just such a totally different experience from the Wendy Williams show. So different. Like, it was just like a little nice waiting room, playing music. Like, they had a little flashing lights in the room, like a little cardboard cut out of Andy to take a picture with. So she meets up with us, and she tells us, like, the segments they're going to go over, and they need crowd participation. And, you know, it, it was some fun stuff. It was like some shit about, like, uh, teasing Anderson Cooper. Um, then she said that Andy's going to answer our questions. I asked her, was there anything I couldn't ask? She was like, no, you can ask him anything. 
I was just so surprised how laid back this was. <laughs> so I was like, okay. I was like, I have a lot of questions. So we go up to the studio. I'm telling you, the time went by like this once we got in. We're in the clubhouse. It's pretty small. It's like the size of my apartment, I want to say. We're sitting like behind the cameraman. Andy's right there. It's like 9, let me see, it's like 9.20. Now he's like coming up to us, like we applaud, answering questions. You know I answer. So the thing is, what I wanted to ask him was, um, who would you rather be stuck in the elevator with, Donald Trump or Kathy Griffin? But I wanted to make, I wanted to make the question count. So I had questions about New York. So I asked him, like, what was your thoughts about the New York reunion being canceled? Are you, like, relieved or are you disappointed about it? He responded that he was disappointed about it. He wasn't relieved, but Leah, she said she was relieved. She said that on her Instagram. But uh, he said that it just didn't make sense at this point. It was all this scheduling conflicts, trying to get people together. And he said that it would have aired in November had they went along with filming. He was like, well, people didn't really care about it at this point. And then he said that people weren't really feeling the season. I was like, well, I like the season. Everyone laughed, but I didn't, I really didn't mind the season. Like I wanted Ramona's feet held to the fire. I don't know, I just thought that wasn't fair. My second question, because he was just going around, but people were scared. I was like, <laughs> um, I asked, so when you first heard the Tom story, what did you think? Would you, would you think, like, this is a lie? Like, she lying. And everyone was like, oof. He said, well, which, which Tom story? Which car story? And everybody was laughing. I was like, well, the first one. And he was like, well, it did sound a little far-fetched, but he was talking about the reunion where him and Erica kind of go at it a little bit. So he, he was kind of skirting around that question. He didn't want to really answer it. But he asked, he asked some, he answered some other questions, but you know, I asked, I got to ask two questions. Those were great questions. Yeah, like I literally could like, I had 10 questions off the bat. <laughs> you were like, oh no, we are ready for this. Oh yeah, like I felt at home in the clubhouse, honestly. I wasn't nervous at all. I was a little high, but then like they gave us two drinks too. So I was just, I was real chill. It was so fun. Um, it was such a wacky show. Like, I'm not sure if you saw the Anderson Cooper one, but it was just wacky. I'm glad I was high for it. Um, Anderson was nice. Uh, he didn't really talk to the audience, really, but it really mm -hmm. went by really fast, really fast. I'm disappointed they didn't put the camera on the audience, but nobody famous was there, you know, just Anderson. After it ended, Anderson was in my DMs. <laughs> what? Yes, I tagged him and he was like, oh, I hope you had a fun time. And oh. the thing is, he responded, but he didn't even reply to the story. So that means he actually looked at my profile and messaged me. Mm -hmm. And then I responded. I was like, you know, yeah, I had a blast. The we made it even better an experience. And um, he, he, like, I see the red mark, but that was a he respond. But, you know, hey, I, hey Anderson in my DMs, like, <laughs> you never know. You know, I, I'd entertain it. <laughs> now, how did they look in person? So, Andy, <laughs> that makeup was um, caked on. Uh, he definitely... Um, he uses that makeup to his advantage. Anderson <laughs> is white, like ghoulish white in person. <laughs> On TV, like they, they're okay, but in person, you can really see the age. I don't have, <laughs> I don't have a paper towel near me, but yeah, it, it, it was given that. <laughs> exactly. It was given this? Yes. But it was such a fun experience. Like, I think that was, the most fun live show I've ever been to. Because it was just so laid back. They wasn't worried about phone. I, I could use my phone. It would just be like, oh, cameras are up. Put your phones away. That's it. It wasn't like you would be ejected or something like that. Or no security, to my, to my knowledge. It was just so chill. 
Probably because they know it's just diehard fans going to that. Yeah, like there's a specific Bravo fan. Like the demographic is very specific and they know people won't try something. Now y'all know Best Fiends is my game. I gotta say, it's the best match three game with different puzzles in it and different characters that I've ever played. Most of the stuff, same crap different color scheme. So stop crushing the same old candy and give yourself a puzzle game that's truly a challenge, but not too difficult. You know I'm on level 20, 26. If you want to play along with me, my code is 2025877. That's 2025877, and you can play against me. Your fiends start out as babies, but you upgrade them with fur monsters and meteorite monsters, and not to mention your diamonds and your gold bars, which gives you second chances to finish the puzzle in the nick of time. It's a brain-boosting puzzle game, action-packed with adventure, all rolled into one. Once you've grown your fiends up, they become more powerful, and each level becomes a little more difficult However, you've already figured out your strategy at this point, so you use that to breeze through. Now, I'm at level 2026, but there are thousands of more levels added each month, not to mention new characters. So there's always a different challenge waiting for you, and no level is the same. So make sure y'all download Best Fiends free today on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. So I did tell her I would love to come back, you know, when you have Karen or Giselle on. So I'm, oh. probably, I'm probably gonna hit her up because I wanna go to a Sunday one. Cause yeah. the ones, that's Black Bravo night. Well, you know what I mean. Like they're gonna have a black guest on a Sunday night. Yeah. So that was my Watch What Happens Live experience. I mean, I would definitely um, recommend it to anybody. It was a fun kiki. Like you get to drink, have your phone out, take pictures. They're they're so chill. Man. That's cool. Right. <laughs> so tell us about your Ooh. tell us about the follies with the Fujis. The Fujis. Oh my God. So I, first I want to question something. Okay. Why would you? after the extensive coverage that we have given Miss Hill on this show for the past three years, why would you arrive on time? I will explain that. <laughs> so the only reason I heard about this Fuji's reunion is because of Twitter. And I was like, you know, I, I love the Fuji's back in the day. I'm a 90s baby. I love 90s music. So I was doing some investigating and I saw that they have actual, like a tour lined up. And for New York, of course, it's like question marks. And it's, this is what I hate about being in New York because everybody wants to do stuff in, in New York. So you got to make sure you jump through hoops in order to get it because not everybody can fit. So they said they were going to do like a raffle. It's sponsored by Global Citizen Festival. I applied for it and like literally like the concert is the next day. So I was just looking over my email, didn't see anything. It's already like 1.30, 2 o'clock. And I'm complaining about it on my Instagram. And, and for some reason, I just thought, let me just check my spam folder. It was in my spam folder, like the random drawing. So I got selected, two free tickets. It was free, free 99. So I was very excited about it. Now they said doors open at six. I was like, we're not getting there at six. I invited uh, my friend T. Cooper, and you know she was excited. When I get there, this was at it was at Pier Seventeen. Do you know where that is? No. It's way downtown near Battery Park. Oh yeah, never got down there. Okay, so when I get there, so we get there at like six forty-five. My friend is already in line. The line is like wrapped, looped, whatever. It's gonna be at the rooftop. So we don't even get upstairs until 7.30. Now we get up there and they say no phones or photography of any sort. They even took our Apple watches. So we have to put in a magnetic pouch. 
seal it, and then you know they have the people to open it once it's at the end. So I was kind of they took your phone for the entirety, and you're waiting for Lauren Hill, and you don't have anything to entertain yourself with. Here's the thing. So the the magnetic pouches, you get to keep it. The thing is, it's locked. You can't take it out. So you can't use your phone. I can't use my phone. And those motherfuckers were smart because they took our watches too, so we didn't have a sense of time. They knew that. That was like, I was like, that is a good idea. So yeah, it's 7.30. We in the drink line, got our drinks. So we're all situated. I had a good spot, but you know, I'm tall as shit, so I could see anywhere. So we were like in the middle. I could see the stage great. I was just kind of pissed that I couldn't use my phone. And then they had security walking around to see if people were on their phones because you get kicked out. Like they weren't playing. I could see them being upset if somebody was actually on stage. But if you're just waiting for the energy to be right for Miss Hill, I feel like maybe being able to send an email, read an article, send a tweet would be apropos. Right, I guess they didn't want to like ruin like the concert experience or people recording the entire show or something like viral happens, like people can't show it. But yeah, it's really, it's just really interesting. That's the new way now because that happened to me when I went to go see Lady Gaga and um, Tony Bennett. The whole auditorium in Radio City, they made us put our phones in a magnetic pouch. It's, it's just so crazy like to have that regulated, you know? Uh, I, this is why I don't go anywhere. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you know, it's so funny because um, I think my friend asked, like, would Alex go to this? I was like, no, no. <laughs> you would not go to this at all. And it was free, but I don't think you would have went to this. <laughs> cool. So here the time go by. So they had a lady with a watch because it wasn't like an Apple watch. It was just a basic one. So I went in with the mindset. I'm like, okay. They're going to come on at maybe 9, 9.30. The venue closes at 11. So 9 o'clock rolls around, 9.30 rolls around. Say at 9.40, I'm just like, oh, Lord, here we go. Because <laughs> the venue closes at 11. So I was just getting nervous. I could feel the crowd getting antsy. That's a long time to be without your phone. Like, what if you had an emergency or something like that, you know? Like, that's why I don't like that little rule. But so 10.05, the band starts going on stage. And it's like a fucking 20-piece band <laughs> on stage. 10.15 rolls around, and music starts playing. Uh, Proz comes out. Lauren comes out. She came out looking really regal. She was really pretty. She was wearing this, uh, this red ruffle dress, big black belt. She looked good. And then Wyclef came out and they started performing and it was a good vibe. Like, I enjoyed the show. They did seven songs. I would say that, you know, Killing Me Softly and Ready or Not and um, Fuji La, that was a moment. Just those three songs and them performing, it just felt like old times. Like, they were actually getting along. Then they took a little break. Like, Lauren was talking to the crowd, just saying that y'all just have no idea. They did six songs, and they took a break after three. Well, they, there was a break in intermission in, in, in this listening party. We can't call it a concert. This was a listening party, a live say, listening party. I, I mean, I, 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 mm. I would say they it had to be seven songs max because the show ended at like 11.05. So 10.15 to 11.05, like it was a 45 minute show and I'm being generous. But like Lauren was just saying, you know, give us some background of like how she met Proz at like 12 years old and his knucklehead cousin, she was talking about Wyclef. And, you know, she was just saying that, you know, they made magic and it was chaotic sometimes and, I would say after they did the last song, she was like, thank you, thank Oh, during the performances when she gave us the disclaimer that, you know, this is just a preview, we still working on things. So then my mind was adjusted to like, okay, 
this is gonna be a short show. So yeah, the concert was over and there was a so lot of you. So you waited about an hour and a half or two hours? I would, or... say, I would say I waited about almost three hours for a 45 minute performance. With and a 10 minute intermission. Well, was it 10 minutes? She was talking for a while, but hearing Lauren talk, it was, it, it was intriguing. Like I was interested in what she was talking about. Speaking of, she sound good. And they didn't, they didn't like experiment with the songs. Like the songs were just how we heard it back in the nineties. Cause you remember like Lauren was like adding all those types of arrangements to her old shit. But she didn't want to pay people. That was probably it. Um, they didn't do any solo songs, none. And after the show, people were like, that's it. And then people were like, uh, is there an encore? Like, there was like a lot of confusion because people didn't know whether to stay or go. But then they saw mm -hmm. the band leave and it was just like, oh, shit, it's actually over with. But I kept like, when we, like when we saw Janet leave, it was all, all, we well, wasted Janet, our time. We at least got a performance and they haven't performed together on stage in, I think, almost 20 years. So it was, a, it was an experience. I, it was free. It was free. That's all I got to say. It was free. Three hours. My friend definitely brought up um, Janet Jackson. And I'm pretty sure you would have been angry if you went with me. You probably Oh, I wouldn't have gone. Oh, I I'm sorry. The last thing I'm ever going to do is go somewhere to see Lauryn Hill. I would say when I, when I told everybody that I was going, like 40 people was like made time jokes. It was like, is she coming? Do you know? Like, they all came out. They were late collectively. How about that? She was on time, but they were late collectively. I have to say, um, I'm impressed. The only thing I regret is I could have went there at 9 o'clock. I just wish I did not get there, like, quarter to 7. I would have gotten there. I would have said, well, when is the venue closing? And would have arrived maybe... 30 to 40 minutes before the venue closed. Because with, with Laura, you just kind of got to catch what you can. You can't show up. I'm going to see when you there. I'm going to call. Is she there? No. Okay. Don't even put your shoes on. She ain't there yet. The thing is, I'm trying to figure out, like, I hope the tour isn't like that. I, I'm just thinking <laughs> because it was just because it was like a free show. They were just giving us a little preview. But why they got to do New York dirty like that? I'm sorry, this is Lauren's M.O. This is what she's done for years. And I'm sorry, if the show had charged, you would have gotten the same show. Oh, if the show charged, it would have been a ride because that was a short show and the wait was longer than the show. That's how Lauren shows have been for the past decade. I don't know why you think things are gonna change now. She pulled that shit in Atlanta, pulled that shit in Detroit, pulled that shit in St. Louis and Los Angeles. So I don't know why you think New York City is going to be different and she's going to show up on time. It was more so FOMO and it was like, just, I just knew it was going to be a moment. And it was like the performance for what it was, they gave a really good show. But I'm thinking y'all, so it goes on sale tomorrow, uh, Friday, and they are going to be in New Jersey. They're going to be in Atlanta, Los Angeles, um overseas too but i'm pretty sure i think that the shows are going to be longer when they're actually on tour but that was my experience i mean would i do it again yes i would have just came later because it was free it was free would you have paid for that um i would have been angry i mean anything over 50 dollars, i would have been angry okay but it was, it was worth my time. I don't think it was like a Janet Jackson tea where she didn't perform at all or like bust a move. Just mumbled and ran off. <laughs> yes. I mean, didn't even mingle with the people. Didn't take pictures, didn't sign autographs, nothing. Just, you know. <laughs> well, um, let's get off Janet today. Let's get into our first uh, hot topic. Well, speaking of tours, Tiana Taylor just announced her farewell tour. The last rose petal. I would not mind seeing that. She looks like she puts on a great show. 
Um, I actually like her little music. I'm sad that this is her last tour. But then again, that's what happens when you let Kanye West manage you and you get into fights with Rihanna. I think it's just privilege on her part. Like, she can retire from music because she can. I mean, her husband can literally just take care of her now. That's true. And they've got those little reality shows. And she has endorsements. She's a good model. Um, she likes to host sometimes. And she acts. So she'll be fine. I'm pretty sure that makes more money than music, as we know from Rihanna. Right. And speaking of Rihanna, they're saying that she's trying to to use old snippets of her voice to make this album. And she says it's not going to sound like anything we've ever heard before. And it just makes me nervous. I think, it, like, we're no longer expecting the album. Right. She's been lying to us since 2018. And an Erica Jane T. Like, she kept lying to us. Like, oh, it's coming out later this year, 2019 come. Oh, yeah. It, you know, I'm working on them in the studio. 2020, it's COVID. Of course it's not coming out. And now we get this, uh, another lie. I don't think we're getting it this year. I don't want it. I think that it's best to leave your reputation unbesmirched. Leave on a high note. You are Rihanna. The last thing you need to do is come out with a flop album. You don't need a lip lock like Eve. Do you remember lip lock? Yes, I do actually. You are one of the 5,000 people that do, because that's how many people bought that album. That album was a joke. She had to go on the talk. That album was so damn bad. She I, had to have people remember her acting skills. That album was so bad. Now she getting ready to be on this show that's giving me a those girls tea um, called Queens, where her and the Cherry, they're all trying to uh, be a girl group again. I mean, they're pushing the marketing budget for it, so I think it's gonna be good. I... And we're all gonna be talking about it. I'm concerned. Now, I will say, Naturi was so good on power. I, I'm looking forward to seeing her. Um, I don't know who this Latina Heffa is. Brandy can act. I'm just worried about the script. It, it's just giving me uh, a Lee Daniels team. Exactly. And I don't like it. It's giving me a strong first season, but canceled by third season already. I'm like, mm -mm, something in the water is already stinking. Now, maybe if this was a mini series and you were like, okay, we'll, we'll see if we're going to bring it back or not, if there's enough public, you know, outcry, then I would be more interested. But I'm like, y'all are already trying to milk this for five or six seasons because you know you need five for Send the KK. Um, I I'm just concerned. I'm consigned. <laughs> I also watched um, Our Kind of People on Fox. Someone asked me to review that. I didn't know what that was. It is a show about rich Black people um, on this island community. Like, think, um, you know, in Martha's Vineyard, there's a community called the Inkwell, where it's like all the really rich Black people. It's like that. So um, they're all summering out there and you have Yaya's character who has a 17 year old daughter. Her mother's recently passed. She's out there with her aunt played by the incomparable De Debbie Morgan. And she's opening um, her black hair care line, Eve's Crown, because her mama was Eve and you know, the hair is the crown. So it's just, she's finding out that like she's related to one of these families and it's like, almost a little bit of like a Count of Monte Cristo tea where it's like she's, you know, come to this town, you know, start her business, but also like she might have to usurp a little bit because the head half in town that's being mean to her is actually her half sister. And we find all this out in the first episode. So it's not like, oh, it's a little bit of a spoiler alert, but like you, you kind of saw it coming. Interesting. Okay. Where, where is this uh, play? Fox. Fox, okay. Can I just can we got going? Morris Chestnut, Luke James, um, no, I'm sorry, Lance Gross, uh, Debbie Morgan, uh, Yaya, and who else? There's like some other some other notable names are on there. I wish they had Patty to play the um the mother-in-law though. So frequently I find myself making a decision of do I want to eat out or cook myself dinner? 
There's a lot of pressure when it comes to losing weight that just leads to unnecessary situations. Noom definitely helps you see food as not only what you eat, but how. Where it encourages you instead of placing guilt. Noom helps you with balancing. Everyone's routine isn't the same. Your friend that goes to the gym six days a week may not be your idea of health. Noom uses a psychology-based approach that will make your routine more sustainable. I'm working on trying to maintain a healthy balance of eating out and cooking my own dinners, as well as adding some sit-ups every night. It gets difficult, but Noom keeps me on track, and I find this program definitely more flexible. What's important is there's no concrete rules to lose weight, just knowing how to help yourself build productive habits. 80% of users finish the program, at least 60 have stuck with their goals for the year. With Noom, there's no fear because it will get you back on your journey. Start building better habits for healthier long-term results. Sign up for your trial at Noom.com slash roast. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash roast. Again, sign up for your trial at Noom.com slash roast. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash roast. Patty uh... LaBelle. Oh, wow, okay. I would think it would go to Jennifer Lewis. <laughs> um, no, this is this woman's a little older than Jennifer Lewis. Uh, I think that just the way the woman is styled, I'm like, you wanted Patti LaBelle, but you couldn't afford her. Uh, you know, speaking of Jennifer Lewis, I feel like she's been playing a mom since she was in her 30s. She has. That is crazy. I was about to say something like, has she just looked old all her life? Like, uh, or just matronly all her life? Um, <laughs> well, no, no, I think she was doing a lot of theater when she was younger. And then when she was like mom age is when she got started getting cast and stuff. Mm. And then also because she's funny, she probably felt she could do more with the mom role than with the ingenue role. That's true. Like, I wouldn't want to be, you know, the lead. I want to be the wacky friend because you get all the best lines. <laughs> that made me think of Natasha Rothwell. Speaking of TV, um, Whoopi Goldberg has extended her contract on The View for three more years. I'm surprised because I have never seen anyone hate their job so much, but maybe it's just a F you to Megan McCain. I think maybe that's what it was. The only time I would see The View is when she was exasperated with Megan, and now that Megan's gone, she probably told them, look, either she goes or I go. Well, the talk show host has signed a new deal ensuring she'll stay through at least season 28. They're currently on season 25. And they're going to have um, people take Megan McCain's place, like they're going to have a rotating conservative for a few episodes. Until they can settle on one. Right, exactly. I think they should have it rotating so that way Joy and Whoopi don't get that irritated with them. Or is Joy retiring? I don't think she's retiring. I think she has at least two more seasons in her. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it as shade. <laughs> no, I mean, I guess they've been doing this for darn near 30 years. Mm-hmm. That's a long time. Right. With the money they'd be making, I would have been clocked out. Or I would have said, I can do this once a week, but I'm not getting up every day at five in the morning for this. <laughs> like Joy, she's been doing it forever. But Whoopi, I think she's been doing it for a good, I want to say like 12 years, I want to say. It's around that. It's around that. But I will say, too, this is probably easier than like doing movies and dealing with those grueling hours. She gets up early, but she's off by two and just takes it on home. Well, Whoopi, like she was working, well, in the beginning stages, she was still working and doing the view. Yeah, she was doing um, her sister act. She right. was getting that off the ground. Mm -hmm. Because when, that's when she brought it to Broadway. And then I think she might have been involved in The Color Purple as well. Mm -hmm. But I know Fantasia was in that for a minute. Right. So while we're on the topic of talk shows, um, let's just update everyone on Wendy Williams. And she Again. is- Again. 
Well, she just is not doing great. Like, we heard last week that she was checked in, like, voluntarily into a psych ward. Her brother is updating people on it, but I just feel like she hates her brother. So I'm pretty sure that annoys her that her brother is, like, giving updates on her condition. I really think that she should not go back. I think they should just cancel the season. It looked like they could probably replace her with Nick Cannon if they wanted to. I, I think it's high time. It, it's just looking, like you said, it's been weeks of weekend at Bernie's, and quite frankly, the corpse is starting to stick. Oh. Um, <laughs> really, it's like, but, let's just call it what it is. Like, And I'm not saying Wendy has to like, go somewhere and hide, just like, just do a weekly podcast. Like, get yourself together, take some time off. You've got the money. It's just, first it was a health concern. Then we will confirm that it was COVID. And now it's like mental shit. And I'm just like. It's Erica Jane and her lies. It's like, you know, Tom got confronted by the burglar and then he had to go have eye surgery because my son was rolling his car in the snow because he lives in Pasadena. And someone actually does live in Southern California and they said, yes, there are places high in the mountains where it does snow in Southern California. I was like, oh, okay. I had no idea. Right, but the likelihood that both her son and Tom were in like roll accidents in their cars. And everybody's fine. Right, with no police report. At all, and that would have been, you know, TMZ would have reported on that. Just getting back to the topic, I uh, hope Wendy Williams is fine. Uh, we'll see in October if she, you know, I don't know if she pulls through, or at least they unbuckle her belts from the bed. Because I feel like they just have her in some padded room right now taking care of her. I just hope she doesn't put on another Statue of Liberty costume. I don't think she'll ever do that again. I think she gets triggered when she sees the Statue of Liberty. I think she's like a lonely person. And then her being isolated with COVID, too, I think it's just getting to her. So, yeah. Ugh. So let's talk about this new cast member added to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. She looks boring to me, but have you heard of her? Okay, um, I'm looking at her and she looks like a Tanner version of Tanya Sam. She's and fun. this one is Sanya Richards. So already I'm like, the names is too similar. The hair is too similar. She is an Olympic track star, but let's see if she can run her mouth. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I think they need one more person to round the cast out. Maybe they're looking. But, of course, they have her doing this little, like, uh, test filming. So she can either be a friend, or if she does well, they'll make her full-time. Similar how the things played out with Fallon. Like, they're going to actually, like, have her film, and then at the end, they say if she does well. Like, that's that new contract that they be having. Ah, I think that that doesn't work because then we end up with Fallon's and Toya's. And they were both terrible additions to the show. Mm -hmm. Fallon was so bad, she lost her husband. Well, I think she lost her husband. Oh, I thought you were talking about Toya. Never mind. <laughs> I mean, how you come on the show and then leave and your husband's still staying on the show. Uh-uh. August Alcina seemingly is retiring from music. We retired from listening to you. See, I'm tired of all this, oh, I'm retiring, I'm retiring. You can only retire when you're actually doing a job and you will be missed. <laughs> now, see, you can't, you can't retire from a hobby. You ain't even a one-hit wonder, fool. We don't know any song you sang. The only thing we know is you ate Jada's pussy with Will's permission. That's all we know about you, boo. Well, I was going to say that about Tiana Taylor because I was like, okay, you're retiring, but uh, okay. <laughs> what else? What else is going on? I like that last little album, but um, you do have a point. <laughs> yeah, I can't name one August Alcina song at gunpoint. I was just wondering, what did you think about um, Candace's mama on the last episode of Real Housewives of Potomac. I personally think that she was very entertaining to me. I think that uh, when Miss Dorothy is on, her shade is effortless. 
even though sometimes it's at her own daughter and son-in-law. It would be entertaining if it wasn't so tragically dysfunctional. And the fact that you were still taking out your anger at your ex-husband on your daughter really shows how sick you are and you're supposed to be a therapist. That's a good point. I forgot she's a therapist. She's a therapist. And the only reason she is treating her daughter this way is because the husband had a baby on her. Like, to try and remember, Candace's father had the baby on her, and then they tried oh, to get back together. I think that's why the mama is always so mean to Candace. But to try to embarrass her and the husband, it's like, you know you're going to run this husband off because you don't have enough courage to stand up to your mama. Now, Mama Joyce will try it, but she'll only push so far because she knows Candy is the one who pays the bills. But because she holds the purse strings, she is truly in control. Now, Chris is going to get sick of this bull and leave and take his children with him. And Candace isn't going to be able to find another man because Candace's mother wants her to be her nursemaid. And she can't do that if she's single and has children of her own. Wow, you really like just nailed it, right? <laughs> I mean, what else could it be? It's very obvious. Well... And the other daughters are very clear and very curt with her. They don't fuck with her. She's the only one that's truly been emotionally manipulated enough to give the mother what she wants. The mother clearly don't have any friends. Otherwise, she wouldn't be hanging around her daughter all the time. Fair. I just think, you know, it is messy of Miss Dorothy to be, you know, kiki in with people that Candace don't like. I mean, the fact that she's, even if they were her friends, the fact that you're ragging on your son-in-law to these people on camera where you know he's going to see it. You don't even have the courage to sit down and have a conversation with them and tell him to his face. But they're living in a nice house and that you're supposedly not paying for. So why are you so concerned? If she gonna bump her head, let her bump her head. She ain't got a kid with the man yet, so let her bump her head. That would be Chris's third or fourth child. Third child, right? I think third. No, fourth. He has three kids? There's one that they won't let on camera, and then there's the two that we've seen. Wow. Well, yeah, like, a lot of people said the episode was filler, but I found it entertaining. Like, once they got to the parking lot, the abandoned parking lot where the cars wasn't showing up, like, it was a fun time to me. It was, it was cute. I'm glad that Karen was not participating. We got to see how messy Mia was, and now I, I understand the salad toss. Mia is really trying to be Gabrice and Gabrissi. She brought both of her faces to this season. What did Candace do to Mia to have Mia asking all these questions about Chris when we don't know that much about your coup? When's the last time you got rewarded for brushing your teeth? With Quip's Smart Electric Toothbrush, good habits can earn you great perks like free products, gift cards, and more. Now, you may have heard about Quip before, but this is something new that rewards you and your mouth. The Quip Smart Brush for kids and adults connects with the Quip app via Bluetooth. Track when and how well you brush. Get tips and coaching to improve your habits. Earn points for daily brushing and bonus points for completing challenges. You could redeem these points from Quip and other partner and enter yourself in a $2,500 bathroom makeover sweepstakes. Grand prize, $1,500 Lowe's and a $1,000 West Elm gift card so you can spruce up your routine. There are also $5 refill credits and discounts, not to mention free Quip products and discounts on floss, battery chargers, tote bags, refresher bags, and Target gift cards. In addition to brush heads, Quip also delivers floss, toothpaste, mouthwash, and gum refills every three months from $5. Shipping is free, so save money and skip the hustle and bustle of in-store shopping. Join the 5 million mouths who use Quip and save hundreds compared to the other Bluetooth brushes when you get a Quip Smart Brush for just $45. So start getting rewards for brushing your teeth today. Go to getquip.com slash roast right now to save $10 on a Quip Smart Electric Toothbrush. That's $10 off a Smart Electric Toothbrush at getquip.com slash roast. Spelled G-E-T, 
quip.com slash gross. Quip, the good habits company. That's true. I think she just likes stirring the pot. I mean, she's stirring it with everybody, but stir it up with Giselle. I did think it was funny that um, a scholar, she was like uh, complaining to Giselle, like, oh, well, you saw like she's asking, uh, this Chris getting paid? She's like, well, is he? I want to know. <laughs> like, I cracked up so much at that. I mean, that's, you can't invite Giselle to a shady comment. She's always, she, she'll never pass up that invitation. Right. <laughs> she wasn't that annoying on this episode. Was she on this episode that much? She was. She had the, well, you fast forwarded probably through her parts. That's probably what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, was she with them daughters again? Yeah, like where her daughter almost fast, hit the man. Fast forward. A best fiends team. Yes. <laughs> so can you enlighten me on what the internet is talking about? Well, Black Twitter is talking about with this Karen Civil thing. I don't even know who Karen Civil is. Um, Karen Civil is, I forgot all about her. I thought they were talking about Candace Owens. Karen Civil, uh, I sure did. I ain't heard the name Karen Civil in many a moon. Talk about waking the dead. Um, she was like this social media maven influencer. She was like getting interviews, giving interviews, like a seminar boss girl kind of tea where you don't really know what she's talking about, but she's telling you how to run your business and telling you how to get into media. And maybe she did something with Hot 97. I don't know. But she was one of them. And there was supposedly some stuff that Jason Lee was spilling on The Breakfast Club about her this morning, but I haven't had a chance to listen to that interview, but I will do that on The Alleged Show. Yeah, according to him, he said that uh, she hired hackers to hack his website or something like that. Uh, I believe that. Apparently she's a scammer. She scammed this Jesse Wu girl that was on Love & Hip Hop, I think. Yeah, she probably told her she could like manage her and make her famous and took some upfront fees. Is that what happened? I think so. And then Meek Mill came out against her too. Yeah, and that's why we haven't heard from her because she was like everywhere. And then everyone was like, you can't deliver the products you say you can. And then she was kind of nowhere. Huh. Okay, because I was just like, is she like you know, uh, an activist, uh, an influencer. Someone just said she's a blogger. Yeah, she was, she was a blogger. She was like kind of the first in that like activist influencer, like, you know, always adjacent to something. But um, apparently she was, a lot of people called her a Sean, a female Sean King, I think. Oh, wow. <laughs> Gabrielle Union says the person she is today wouldn't have stayed with Dwayne Wade after he got another woman pregnant. You could bring home a lot of things. You could bring home some Chuck E. Cheese pizza. You could bring home McDonald's, but don't bring home a baby. If you bring home a baby, you ain't got a home. You already got a home with that new baby. Stay the fuck there. I will send your shit. Right. And that, I knew that had to sting for her. Like, being a, someone who can't have children, this man has a baby with some other woman. I just, I mean, he cute, but he ain't that cute. He ain't side baby cute. Dwayne Wade? Yeah, because he oh, got them anklets and those rum raisin toenails. I don't know if I want to share toenail polish with my man. I'm not attracted to him. Well, me either if he having babies on me. But also those rum raisin toenails and those anklets. I, I, I'm sorry. It's the anklet for me. Now, you know who is cute? I will say Tristan, Tristan Thompson, he's cute. Bye. He will call me tomorrow. Oh, my God. <laughs> he is cute. He could get it. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, he's giving it away, so it was not that difficult to get. <laughs> Everybody can have some. Right, I mean, but I'm not going to marry him or have a baby with him. I think, um, I think once you, like, get an apartment in Calabasas, like, you get his phone number and they set you up with your first appointment. 
<laughs> that easy. Mm -hmm. Why are there so many articles still about Lori Harvey and Michael B. Jordan being so happy together? Now we got Steve Harvey coming out and saying, this is the first time she's been happy. We get it. And he is trying to convince us that not only is he heterosexual, but that he's attracted to black women. Can we all just collectively say we bought it so they can stop wasting our time? <laughs> yeah, Michael B. Jordan is definitely on my list. <laughs> I don't think he can act that great, but I mean, he's, you know, he can definitely um, entertain me. He can't entertain me. He couldn't do it in Fahrenheit 911, and he can't do it now. Oh, man. After I saw him in that movie, and I'm like, you see, now you'd have messed up Ray Bradbury for me. Leave me all the way alone. I don't know. Like, I feel like if I walked past Lori Harvey, I wouldn't know who that was. But her name is always in the news for relationships. Like, nothing that she actually done or anything. Like, I don't know what she does. I thought she was supposed to be on Dear Black People. Dear White People. Dear White People. But yeah, um, speaking of that, it just started today, I think, on Netflix. And I've been seeing previews of them, like, because it's a musical. Oh, um, Lord. Why, why? It's like a, a Black Glee, almost. And it's cheesy. And so we thing. If we're going to do a Black Glee, let's reboot fame. Let's do it right. Let's do it proper. Let's do it honest. The show really jumped the shark, though. Like, I kind of gave up on it after season two. I never watched Glee. No, 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 no. Um, Dear White People. Oh, never watched that either. <laughs> I used to watch Glee, but it just, I don't know, it, it, it became hard to keep up with. Like, it wasn't must-see TV anymore. Like most of Ryan Murphy's shows after the second season. <laughs> oh, yeah. So tonight, this, tonight's Wednesday. Right? No. Oh, my God. See, I am tired. I've been out every night, y'all. <laughs> that means club, like, buzz, concert, oh, another club. Concert, another concert. <laughs> you know, I just went to that Banksy exhibit today, too. Oh, I saw. Yeah, it was cute. Um, Wish I had someone to uh, go with. You know, I'd be going to all types of things and I'd be thinking, who would want to go see this with me? <laughs> I just stay home. <laughs> I am in the greatest city in the world, so I have to be out. And when I was by myself in my studio apartment in Harlem in 2020, I told myself that I will never take for granted going outside again. So You never did. That was never your issue. Now, maybe that might have been mine. That was never your issue. Well, next week I have three concerts lined up. I have Erica Badu and Questlove. Um, I'm going to see Tanache. Don't do it. Don't do it. Nobody in the comments. Tanache and JoJo. Again, zip it. Okay. I'm not saying anything, but there's I'm something that you can't see right now. This is my Tanache pose. <laughs> she has a neck, okay? She has a neck. I'm glad you found it. Anyway, I love being in New York because there's just always something to do. There's a lot to do here. There's the park. There are concerts here. I'm just not going. No, I do, um, do want to go see Erica Badu when she gets here. Oh, she's coming to San Francisco? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, she's coming to Oakland. Ah. Well, I hope you are able to cross the bridge. I'll find a way. So, you know we have to discuss this real interview. I'm surprised they got that interview. It was a lot. It was. It was, it was disturbing. It was heartbreaking. My, I, I feel so bad for her and you could see on screen, she was just tired and she just wants justice. And this, it, it's just, it speaks to Nikki's lack of character. That's all I can say. Or compassion. Mm. Um, this woman looked like she was in real distress. Like, I believed her. I didn't think she was lying. 
I mean, she actually said like the entire story from her viewpoint. And then I think she just wants to be left alone. And a lot of people, Barb's mostly are asking, why is she coming out now? Like, I'm like, if you see your abuser with like a superstar on TV and you see him all the time, I mean, that's triggering. And I'm pretty sure people go into his past and then they're going to look you up, you know, like if you're the victim. And also, it's they're trying to browbeat her into recanting her story so that he no longer has to register as a sex offender. She was not bothering them. They started bothering her. Right. And trying to paint her as a liar. And all this just to get him off the sex offenders list so he can travel with her. Exactly. And Nikki, you know, you think... I don't know, even if she did pick this man, she could at least like acknowledge that what he did was wrong. But you know what she did? Like it all started with her and what she put on, I think it was Instagram. Like I have it right here. So she put to a fan that was messaging her, the fan was sympathetic to Kenneth Petty. So then she responded and said, well, he was 15, she was 16 in a relationship but go off internet. Y'all can't run my life. Y'all can't even run your own life. Thank you, boo. Emojis. Like she just totally dismissed this woman's experience from jump. Yep. So it just says a lot about her and it just, I can't believe that fans are really dying on this hill. I, I'm glad that she got the story out and we heard it from her mouth and now there's nothing more to say. It gave a face to it and Remember when Nikki tried to say she was like a white woman too? Mm-hmm. He tried to paint that narrative as well to her hundreds of millions of followers. <laughs> right. It's just, it's sad. And it's, I mean, it was fine when Nikki was just doing irritating stuff and going back and forth with Cardi B. Like, I didn't mind the celebrity antics. I don't mind her getting on Queen Radio and spilling tea about grown people that consented to be involved in her nonsense. Like her fighting with Joe Budden. That's free press and full promomo and we get a good kiki out of it. This is out of kiki territory now. And you know that she's been silent. Ain't nothing to say. I think she realizes if I say anything, public opinion might turn on me and sponsors might pull out. I don't see her being done. I feel like the barbs are going to be there. We just have to wait for the barbs to get old enough to where they no longer care about her. It's just sad that someone of her talent is really doing this. Like, she's just so despicable for trying to shut this woman up. And I hope this woman gets some money from her. From the The right way. The right way, from the court. Not just a cheap bribe. And then if you go and bribe, you Nicki Minaj, you should have pulled up with the Brinks truck and said, let me pay you for your pay. $20,000? Child, please. That ain't shit. Right. Did she, was it 50000 or 20000 It's still too I, Exactly. I'm, unless you're in the millions, I don't want to hear nothing. <laughs> Kudos to The Real for giving that lady a platform to tell her story. And they were really respectful with how they handled it. That was a great interview from them. It was. And I really like Garcelle on The Real. I do, too. Especially, I'm not sure if you saw that clip, but, you know, she was very emotional about Haiti. Because, you know, she's Haitian. Yeah, I have not seen that clip yet. I saw the, I saw it on the feed, and I was just like, okay, all the things we have to get to. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I like her. She's a good fit on the show. Um, do you want her to come back on Housewives of Beverly Hills? I would say yes, because now I'm going to say I understand somewhat of how she feels that she's not included in the group, that Uh. she doesn't feel like she's a part of the group. I think it takes a bit of time. And I'll also say because she's, you know, a working actress, and I think the same thing happened with Eileen you have to be kind of like a Rena, a Kyle, a Dorit, where you're hanging out with these girls, even off camera all the time, where you don't really work. Like, Garcelle's got to be on set. Garcelle don't have time. 
Right. And you see how Crystal's like wiggling her way in, trying to get into the mean girl click. <laughs> mm hmm. Because she hasn't had as much time, and then because she's always a day late to a cast trip, I, I just feel like you've got to put more time in, and then we'll see. Because I feel like if you always a day late to a cast trip, this is your second full season. The first season, you really had a friend of role. The first season, you didn't go on two of the trips. So it's like, you've got to actually hang out with these heifers if you really want to get to know them. It can't just be for the camera. And then you expect to feel like part of the group. Also, you can't step into a friendship that's been going on for 10 years and expect that you're gonna really feel like I'm a part of this immediately. It's gonna take a moment for you to feel like you're really in. Right. But I mean, she's friends with Sutton and I would have never seen that coming. Like they actually like hang out with each other when they're not filming. And that's the thing, y'all have to do that with the rest of the cast because clearly you've got time to hang out with each other off camera. You gotta start inviting Kyle, you gotta start inviting Doree, you gotta start inviting Rena if you really wanna be in that clique. You've got to put yourself out there. It's not like, oh, I invite you, I invite you, I invite you, and you never show up. I really did feel that moment when she's at the dinner table being very vulnerable about how she felt by being the only Black cast member. I think this kind of conversation is what I wanted on New York City. Like, they're doing it the right way. It was like actually entertaining, and I felt like the women actually heard her. I think so, too. But New York, I mean, that was a, a fucking disaster. It just, it wasn't a good season. Right. <laughs> and I feel like Ramona, Luann, and Sonia's plot lines have just come to an end. So Leah and Ebony were the new blood, but they didn't have enough to put the show on their back. And needling Ramona about being a Republican was cute, but it got old. Right. And speaking of old, how old do you think uh, Nicole Richie is? Oh, you see, for a minute, I thought you said Nicole Murphy, and I was going to say, well, 7,500 in alien years. But, because um, I think her people live to about four, usually about like 40 or 50,000. You, Because you know that lizard skin, they just keep shedding. But Nicole Murphy, um, I guess she's our age. Nicole Richie. Nicole Richie is our age. She just turned 40. So she's our age. I'm not close to 40. You a lot closer to 40 than anything the hell else. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> our age is not on the docket today. But anyway, Nicole Richie was blowing out her candles at her 40th birthday and her hair caught on fire. Did you see that? Oh, oh, that's who that was. Yes. And how does it, like, is it because of product or is it just because her hair was dry? It must have, it looked dry. She's too rich to have hair that damaged and dry. You need a conditioning treatment. Like, first it, like, lit on fire right here. She put it out, and then the whole thing went up right here, and that's when the camera cut off. <laughs> well, I hope the hemp is okay. She said, well, she can laugh at it now because she posted it. The, you see, I think it's time to stop blowing out birthday candles. I think that's the issue. Like, didn't we learn from COVID? I don't want you blowing on my food. Right. <laughs> like, I just don't need spittle, breath, none of that. Why is that on my food? Like, unless we go and fan the candles, like, do a cupcake. Let me blow out a cupcake. I can blow on my own food. But why do we need you? <laughs> <laughs> that's I mean, the problem and then you was leaning over the cake too much so then you getting hair in the cake because it's already no mm -mm. that sounds like some unwashed white people shit i don't think any adult blows out their candles <laughs> like i used to do that as a kid but i hope an adult wouldn't do that well we hope adults would bathe but they don't good point you definitely don't have to worry about you know this adult <laughs> Well, those were our hot topics. So, um, yeah, I will see you sooner than my fucks for Tiana Taylor farewell concert. And I'll see you sooner than Nikki's accountability. What a good one.